Okay, so linear regression. So the whole idea of linear regression is we've got some data, where we're going to try and fit a straight line to the data. So as an illustration, this is the first part. There will be two or three videos on how to do this. So we're looking at the relationship between speed and distance to stop for cars. So we've got fifth job observation. These are the speeds, and these are the distance to stop. And these correspond. So the car here was going four miles per hour, and it took two feet to stop, etc. And what we want to do is we want to see if there's a linear relationship between how fast you're going and how long it takes to stop. So what we're going to do is we're going to take data, read it into MATLAB. We're going to start by having a look at the plot, see what it looks like. Then we're going to do linear regression, and then we're going to see if there's a significant linear relationship. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, first of all, I'm going to grab the speeds. And I'll go to MATLAB, and I'll call these speeds. So speeds equals, as before, square bracket, paste the data in, square bracket. There they are. Now I'll go and get the distances. So highlight them, copy them, go to my lab, call them dist equals square brackets, paste the data, square brackets. There we are. So I go to my cheat sheet. Right, so we basically want to produce a scatter plot and we want the, what we call the response variable, which is the thing we're trying to predict, plotted on the y axis. And the predictor, the thing that we're using to predict it, on the x-axis. So in this case, we want to predict the distance to stop given the speed. If it's like this, if it's got positive slope, we say it's a positive linear relationship. And if it's got a negative slope, we call it a negative linear relationship. And the model we're fitting in is basically that our response, so in our case, our distance to stop, is going to be some sort of straight line relationship with our speed we're going at. Plus, there's going to be noisy data, there's going to be some noise there that we're going to take into account. So, the main command you want is first of all the scatter plot, which is just scatter. So, if we go here and we just go scatter, we give it x first. So, in our case, x is our speed and our y is our dist. So, I put in speeds is what it wants. So, here we've got our speed and here we've got our distance. And you can see roughly that as speed increases, so for faster speeds, obviously it never went particularly fast, it goes up to 25 miles per hour, the distance to stop increases. So if you're going faster, it takes long to slow stop. If you're going slower, it doesn't take as long. So what we've got here is a positive linear relationship. So the first question says, Describe the relationship. Well, um, we have a positive linear relationship. So I've used the word linear because we're, talk we're not talking at curves or anything, we're just looking at linear. And it's positive because as the x-axis increases, the y-axis increases. That is, we have this slope, not something that's looking like this. The other thing is, how strong is it? Well, uh, there's quite a bit of variation around this, but it's reasonably strong. So let's just say that we'll give it a strength. We have a strong positive linear relationship. Next, we need to fit a linear relationship for distance on speed. What are the estimated coefficients? Interpret the coefficients in context. So to do that, let's see what commands we need. We need our reg stats command. So we go reg stats, and you give you y first this time. So our y in this case is our distance, our x is our speeds. If you hit return, that should open up a dialog box like this. So you choose what you want it to produce. Well, we want our coefficients. Um, if we go back to our question, the last bit is the observed mean square error. So we probably want that as well, the mean square error. We're also going to do some testing. And if we're going to do some testing, we probably need to get our T stats as well, which we can use to test if there's a significant linear relationship. We're not doing any assumptions checking, so we don't need any residuals at this point. We 
not doing anything pretty. So that's all we need at this point. So we click OK. Some variables have been created in the current workspace. So basically, it's created the stuff that we want to do it. So, <clears throat> so fifth, of it, what are the estimated coefficients? So, let's work out what coefficients that we want. Verify type beta. There's your coefficients. So the first one is the first coefficient, the second, the second coefficient. What do we mean by coefficients? Go back to this model. I'm fitting the model that's beta zero. So beta zero is the first coefficient. Beta one is my second coefficient. This is the y-intercept, and this is the slope. So if you go here, we've got our y-intercept is minus 17.5791, and our slope is 3.9324. So let's start with this one. So if we go back, we've got the coefficient. So, what's the first one we've got? We've got the intercept. So, we have the estimate of the intercept is minus, what does that mean? If the speed was zero miles per hour, and the expected time to stop is minus this. So the same distance, so I'm doing time to distance, expected distance to stop is minus 17.5791. This is obviously. Nonsense. Basically, it's because I don't actually put any constraints on that intercept. So, because of that, it just gets fitted by the data. And in this particular situation, it actually says it takes minus 17, so it's just nonsense. And that will sometimes happen with the intercept. The estimate of the slope is so you get the slope, it's the next number, the 3.9324. That and then what does that mean? That we're saying if the speed increases by, and when we're interpreting the slope, we talk about an increase of just one. So if increase in this case by one mile, mile per hour, then we expect. to stop would increase by 3.9324 feet. So because this is slope, we're saying as our speed increases by one mile per hour, then the distance to stop will increase by whatever the slope is, in this case 3.9324. Test is a significant linear relationship between speed and distance. So what we're saying here is we can say, well, <clears throat> if, as our predictor in this case, speed changes, y doesn't change at all, then we've just got a constant. What that means in parameter terms is this beta 1 is equal to 0. So we're going to say, could it be possible? We got, what, 3 point something? Is it possible that that was just chance for this data? And in fact, in reality, beta 1 equals 0, and it's just by chance it looks like it's 3. So we can actually test. We're going to do this null test, which is beta 1 equals 0, versus the alternative, which is not equal to 0. And we can get a value for that by looking at this calculation there. So how do we do it? Well, we, um, first of all, we should put in our null hypothesis. So the null is that beta 1 equals 0. And the alternative is that beta 1 is not equal to 0. 
So we need to calculate a test statistic. So the observed test statistic is. Right, now, if we go all the way back to here, how do we do it again? Well, we can find B slip, which has various bits in it. And we can put it together so we can have a look at it. So I'm going to go towards the whole T stat. And because it's contained within, I want the beta part T stat. I go T stat dot beta. I also want to look at the T stat dot SE. The T stat dot T. And finally, the T stat dot B value. So that produced it. So what that's doing, this command, is this is our observed value of the betas. Here's their standard error. Here's the test statistic for each one, and here's the p-value. So, going back to our cheat sheet, we want beta 1 hat. So that's our best guess of what this value is. So, if we go back here, it's this number here. It's the slope that we calculated the 3.93234. But the idea is, if I went and got a new data and I repeated it, this would vary each time. I wouldn't always get the same value. You know, different data would give me slightly different slopes. How much would it vary? by this amount, so 0.4155 tells you how much this value would vary if I repeated this experiment again and again. Yeah. This is our standard error. It's this number here, the standard error of beta 1 hat. How much beta 1 hat would change each time I repeated the experiment? Yeah. To get my test statistic, I take this number and divide it by this number. But it's been done for you because the t stat dot t is that value. So this divided by this gives you the 9.4640. Rough rule of thumb, if this number is ever bigger than 2 or less than minus 2, then you've probably got a significant result. That is, it's not equal to 0. We've got 9.4640. So, if we grab that. I'm going to say the observed value is that with a p-value of p-value is this number here, not point, not, 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 not. Maybe there's some extra digits there. Let's basically try changing the format to long. Repeat this again. There's your p-value. You can now see it's very, very small. So there's my p-value. And the usual rules are you look at this number and say, is it less than 0.05? This is very, very less. So we can say we reject the null hypothesis. And conclude that there is a significant relationship between speed and distance to stop. In other words, we said, is it possible that beta 1 equals 0? This is the probability of seeing the data we got if it was equal to 0, which is very, very small, so highly unlikely. So we go, this seems to be rubbish, we reject it and say it's not equal to zero. There is actually an off a slope, which we were suspicious of. Finally, we want the observed mean square error. So we just type MSE, and there's our value. So mean square error is Okay, I'll do some more linear regression on things like assumption, check-in and prediction next time. Goodbye.